The etiology of hypertension. What is it that causes some people to have this sustained elevation of blood pressure? Well, first of all, let's think about the essential form of hypertension. Remember, that is the, the primary type. Well, in the primary type, really, we don't know what causes it. We do know that very often there's a family history. So if your parents were hypertensive, you've got an increased probability of becoming hypertensive. But we actually don't know the cause of the essential primary form of the disease. Now remember that the essential primary form was by far the most common, but between two to five percent of conditions were secondary to some other disorder. And here there are some clear <coughs> underlying disorders that can cause it. By far the most common cause of uh, secondary hypertension is hypertension which is secondary to some form of renal disease, perhaps glomerular nef nephritis, perhaps polycystic kidney disease. So most cases of secondary hypertension are secondary to some form of renal disease. Another possible cause of secondary hypertension is pregnancy. Some drugs uh, can uh, precipitate hypertension. Drugs which contain oestrogen, for example, can cause hypertension. There are some cardiovascular disorders which can cause hypertension, such as aortic stenosis, narrowing of the aorta. Hypertension can also occur secondary to disease of the adrenal glands. Remember the adrenal medulla producing adrenaline and noradrenaline, both of which will increase blood pressure, and the adrenal cortex producing uh, steroid type hormones, a corticosterone, which again can increase blood pressure. So the essential primary form, we don't know the cause. The secondary form, several possible causes which can be identified. Now I've said we don't know the cause of essential hypertension and that is true but we do know many factors that can influence blood pressure. So it's very important to advise patients on these lifestyle factors. It can make a huge difference to their blood pressure. So yes, it's true we don't know what actually starts off the high blood pressure to begin with, but it's also true we know about lifestyle factors, we know about advice we can give our patients that will significantly lower their blood pressure. Now there are some racial differences between blood pressures. If you go around the world with the US fig and you take blood pressures of all the different races, then you will find variation. And it may be that there is some very minor uh, racial variations in blood pressure. But what is much more likely is the variations in blood pressure you will detect relates to lifestyle factors of those races. So people that are active a lot of the time will tend to have lower blood pressures than people that sit around a lot of the time, like a lot of people in, in the Western world do. So yes, there are racial differences, but they seem to be related to environmental factors. Indeed, the type of factors we are about to discuss. Now with increasing age in Western countries, there tends to be an increase in blood pressure. But again, this seems to be related to lifestyle factors. So even people that are getting old, if they are still physically fit and active, often their blood pressures can remain really quite low at young adult uh, levels. So increasing age, there's a tendency, but it may well be related to inactivity and other lifestyle factors. Now, if you eat a lot of salt, that's going to increase the osmolarity of the blood. The blood will become hypertonic. And that's going to tend to attract more water 
into the circulatory system. That's going to increase the volume of the blood. That will increase venous return and via the Frank Starling reflex mechanism in the heart that will tend to increase cardiac output. That sounds good in theory. In practice some people are quite salt sensitive and others are not. So a person that is salt sensitive their blood pressure would tend to rise after taking salt and a person that is not salt sensitive well their blood pressure wouldn't change very much after, after eating salt. The problem is of course when you look at your patient you can't tell whether they are salt sensitive or not. So we tend to advise all patients to cut down on the amount of salt, the amount of sodium chloride that they eat. Most people eat way more salt than they need because it makes food taste more savoury. What we tend to do is say don't add salt to, to your food and avoid highly processed very salty foods because food manufacturers often put an awful lot of sugar, fat uh, and salt into their products. Another lifestyle factor is, is potassium and a high potassium diet can actually help to lower blood pressure. So a high potassium diet can actually help to lower blood pressure. So we should advise these patients to eat plenty of fruit and plenty of vegetables. Now there's other reasons for this but one reason is it will raise the potassium in their blood and that will help to lower their blood pressure. Fruit and vegetables are a part of any healthy lifestyle anyway. The next lifestyle factor we can discuss is obesity. The fatter someone is the higher their blood pressure tends to rise. One way to think of this is that there's just more body mass to perfuse therefore the heart has to work harder to get the blood around the larger body therefore the blood pressure has to rise to perfuse the greater tissue bulk in obesity. What is certainly true is that if patients are obese and hypertensive and they lose weight then very often their blood pressure will go down as well without additional treatment. So obesity can be quite a major factor. Alcohol is certainly a factor. Alcohol intake and blood pressure are positively correlated. In other words, people that drink a lot have higher blood pressure. Now this isn't really an acute effect it's a cumulative effect but it's still true that the more people drink the higher their blood pressure will tend to be. So a very important part of health education is to reduce alcohol consumption. A reduction in alcohol consumption can re result in a lowering of blood pressure. Now people often talk about psychological stress and it's certainly true that short-term stress and anxiety will increase your blood pressure in the short term. That is certainly true. I think it particularly raises the systolic blood pressure actually. But in the longer term it's more questionable. Psychological stress is probably not actually a major factor in long-term hypertension. Or not that important a factor anyway. Exercise is a very big factor. Exercise helps to lower blood pressure. So if someone is hypertensive and they start taking regular exercise then that can bring the blood pressure down to quite acceptable levels very often even in the absence of medication. So regular exercise is a very important factor. And I think we'll just indulge ourselves a little now and try and work out why this might be. Well if someone's exercising regularly then certainly they can lose weight and the weight reduction will tend to lower blood pressure.